Here's a sneak preview of our fantastic new internet safety song called Who Do You Trust? You'll see the full version at the end. Enjoy the assembly. So who do you trust? You know that you must be safe and things will all be better. Good morning. Today is Safe for Internet Day. Safer Internet Day is celebrated across the globe in over 170 countries with thousands of children, including you, joining in across the UK. Today we can celebrate all the great things about being online and remind ourselves how we can stay safe. There are lots of different ways that you can use the internet or go online. <laughs> At the moment, we are all going online a lot to speak to our friends and family, talk to our teachers, complete our learning. Without the internet, we won't be able to do all of these things. I'm sure you can think of lots of other ways that you or a member of your family uses the internet. Here are some of the children from Year 6 to tell you how they use the internet. When I use the internet, I like to call my friends, play games and watch videos and I like to do that on my phone. Hello, um, I use my phone and my switch for gaming and I use my laptop for educational stuff from, you know, yeah. I also use my phone for um, texting my friends and family. Hi guys, so this is what I like to do on live. So yeah, first of all, I don't really go online as much, but I normally just watch YouTube and play games. That's it. Bye. My device is I use is iPad, laptop, and iPhone. And I like to play games uh, online and make new friends with everyone. What do you like to do online? I like playing games and listening to music. I like to use Google to do my research online. I use my laptop and my iPad to go onto Google. The device I use is my PS4 Pro, which I like to play games on, like Fortnite, Rocket League, and many more games. Bye. Thank you, Year 6. Here is a video of some other children talking about how they use the internet. How many of you use it for the same things? I use the internet usually for um, YouTube and sometimes social media. I don't have a number or a SIM, so I usually just use Snapchat to talk to my friends. I never really use my story so that everyone I added can see it. I usually just post things to, privately through messages to people. And then sometimes I use Instagram to talk to th my other friends who don't have Snapchat. When I play with my brother, I stay on for a lot longer and have more fun. And also you can be a bit more competitive, like if you're playing yeah, a game and you're yeah. fighting against each other, like, <laughs> who's going to win, who's going to win? Sometimes, <coughs> when I'm really sad or something, yeah. I look at funny. something memes. funny, mm. like memes, because like they cheer me up and make me happy again. There are so many different ways of accessing information online. We can check out our favourite news websites, we can see what social media is saying, or we can download dozens of different news apps. In fact, there's so much news and information that's readily available to us, it's a miracle we have time for anything else. This year, the Safer Internet Day, we're looking at trust online. What is trust? Trust is when we have a strong belief that someone or something is honest and tells the truth. Can we trust everything we see online? Here is a video from some children giving facts about meerkats. Which ones do you think are true? Have a look at our video about meerkats. Some facts are true and some information is false. Can you decide which are true and which are false? How much do you know about meerkats? Here are four fascinating meerkat facts. A group of meerkats is known as a mob, gang or clan. 
As desert animals, meerkats need lots of water. They drink around six litres a day. Meerkats can grow up to a staggering 160 centimetres in height. That's the same as a gorilla. Meerkats are immune to some snake venom, which means they could take on a cobra. Want to know more about meerkats? Check out this site. Which facts were true and why? The mob clan and gang run because lots of animals do that, make mobs and gangs and gangs. But I thought it was true because when I watched a TV program, I saw a bunch of meerkats and one meerkat in, a diff in different episodes take on a cobra and then there were just two halves of the cobra. Well, I think the fact about the meerkats in the water drinking six litres a day, I think that's false because meerkats are really small. How can they drink all that water? The false ones were um, that they can grow up to the size of a gorilla. Because meerkats are little small things. So the title um, at the start, it said fake going down on the bit, but not spelled, but not spelled correctly. How does it make you feel when you see false information? It makes me feel a little bit stupid and sad and a wee bit angry as well. Annoyed? Well, it makes me feel kind, kind of confused. How do you know what to trust online? Well, I would always check where it came from and who made it and ask a trusted adult and uh, just check check if anyone, like any other trusted websites, say the same thing. If you really want to trust it, you might want to go and ask like an adult or something. If something seems too good to be true, then normally it is. I keep checking and checking and checking again to see if it's true, because not everything you see on the internet will be true. Although there is lots of great information online that is useful and trustworthy, it is important to remember that there is also information online that is not so trustworthy and may even be there to confuse or persuade us. You may have heard the term fake news mentioned a lot. Here is a video taking a look at what fake news is. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. It's been one of the most talked about subjects of the year. Fake news is a big problem. This is what is and isn't news. Fake news. But what is it and what does it mean to you? Fake news is when someone spreads rumours that aren't true. It's more of like a scam, I think. I think fake news is rumours spread around by people like to get attention. Sometimes it's like, like so persuasive that like you think that it is real. If it's serious news, it can get you possibly worrying and thinking about stuff too much. It makes you feel like annoyed and angry. I don't know tricky. what to believe when, so it's really hard to know if things are true or not. When I hear something and I believe it, I feel like I've been tricked or something. Fake news usually comes down to two things. Firstly, false news stories that aren't true at all. They go online or are shared on social media, even though the person writing them knows that they are made up. Number two, stories that may have some truth to them, but the facts aren't clear or checked properly, or the writer has exaggerated some of it to mean what they want it to. So do you think you'd be able to spot it? Well, these kids here are taking part in a project, looking at how much kids like you know about fake news and how they deal with it. It's part of a project that's been running all year. The expert in charge of it thinks that from the age of 10, kids should be taught more about how to spot fake news. Children know that fake news exists, but do they actually recognise it when they see it online, on the TV and in the newspapers? That's where lessons would really help. Because if children stop thinking and feeling that they can actually believe the news is true, then they might start switching off altogether and actually not show an interest in the world around them. So what does this class think of what they've learned? I think fake news should be taught in school because then they can be more aware of what's around them and whether they know if it's fake or not and what to believe. It's taught me about fake news, now I realise it could be serious. If you weren't talk about, talk, taught about it, 
you would know, not know what's truth. Now I know how to spot fake news by who posted it, how much likes, where it comes from, and if I don't know, I just ask my friends or families. The best advice that I've learned is like, look out for proper brands. It helps students, like they could learn other people what fake news is about, and maybe even teach um, like your mum or dad and stuff. If it's fake, like you won't know what's actually happening in the world. Think of yourself as an internet detective and actively try to find out more. It is really important to question things online. Ask yourself, what is it trying to get me to do? What are the risks? Here is a video with some advice from an expert. The internet has made it easy for anyone to have a website and to publish articles about whatever they like. Social media sites like Twitter and Facebook allow these articles to reach hundreds of thousands of people very quickly. Now that might sound good, but what if what these articles are saying isn't true? If there's a lot of false news going around, but there's still some true news going around, it's hard to tell which one's which. But if it's something like a very big company, like BBC, let's say, yeah. then you know it's yeah, very unlikely lie. to be fake news because yeah. they and don't lie. Also, you know, if it's fake news, you can look at the evidence they give because yeah. they, so sometimes they put where the resources are from, but if the resource is from this company, dodgy. which is really bad and dodgy, but also you can tell from the history. So, like, if yeah. the history has been, they've been blocked out for bad, like, yeah. fake yeah. news or behaviour. Then, if you got fake news from one source, and then you got it from another, um, you can sometimes they'd be different, and then you're not sure which one to trust. You you would know the, by the title if it's fishy, but you might also know by the company that made it. They get news, get and instead of checking it and doing all that, they just post it, so they're the first to get it out quickly. There are lots of different types of disinformation. One of them is called clickbait. This happens when stories are written to get people to visit a site. Often the headlines are absurd and sensationalist, and once you've clicked on the headline, the story that you're led to has nothing to do with the story that you were promised. This can make people a lot of money by driving heavy traffic towards their site. Yeah, what it is, is when someone will try to um, attract your attention, so yeah, then they'll get more like, views and more money. Like, exaggerating what the video is, what's in the video, as much as possible. So the pug thing, pug talks. It, the pug was just barking and it sounded yeah. like it was talking. Sometimes there's a difference between clickbait and just dramatising the title. Um, dramatising the title is what's actually in the video, but you're like putting it in capital letters or putting it in lowercase letters. So it's really like... Sad or... Yeah, or, hap or like, yeah. Oh, cool, like, or like look at this new yeah, thing. But if they clickbait it, and make it sound really cool, then more people are going to click on it. And if more people click on it, then ad, ad groups... Yeah, yeah. The, the, in, the, at the end, YouTubers are going to get more money. Another example of disinformation is what's known as propaganda, which is when a story is designed to deliberately mislead people to get them to agree with an opinion or a cause. Propaganda can cause confusion by spreading lies, but it can also turn people against each other. Then there's satire. This is disinformation that's deliberately designed to be funny. For example, it could be an April Fool's story, or it could be a story that makes fun of a celebrity to make them appear ridiculous. Its intention isn't to mislead people, but rather to put a humorous spin on a story. There's also bad journalism. Sometimes disinformation can be made by accident. Serious journalists make mistakes too. In this case, when the mistake is found, it's corrected immediately. Also look out for videos and photos online that look like they may have been altered. People can use computers to manipulate an image in order to change the meaning of a story. Remember, just because there's a related image doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Sometimes there are little details, because sometimes they have pictures to go along with the story, so you can look for little details in the pictures that sort of explain that that can't be real. 
For example, if there's a tsunami going to Antarctica, a tsunami wouldn't go to Antarctica because the ice would be too high. So sometimes it doesn't make sense to what's actually going on. You can usually tell that it's been photoshopped, but maybe you should try and like magnify the image or bring it into its own place because they're good photoshops. It'd be quite hard to tell if it's real yeah. or not real. Sometimes a story might be labelled as fake, even when it isn't. This can often be done by people who disagree with the opinion of that story in order to undermine or discredit it. This is a huge problem because it makes people doubt everything they hear, even if it's from a trusted source. The internet gives us unbelievable access to information and opens up a whole world to us. But we need to make sure that what we read, write and share with others is true. Now it's your turn to take part in our brand new game show called Trust It or Check It, where you get to choose what are the right decisions to make online. Welcome, Welcome to, to Trust, Trust It or, or Check, Check it. it. And here's your host, Mr. Williams. Good morning, Uplands Manor, and welcome to a brand new game show, Trust It or Check It. The aim of today's game is to decide if what you see online can be trusted or should you check it. I'm going to share a few scenarios with you, then it's down to you to decide do you trust it or check it? Trust it or check it. Scenario one. If you saw this advert online, would you trust it or check it? It can be tricky to tell if an online advert is trustworthy or not. It's always best to check, and if you weren't sure, you could look up the advert separately online and speak to an adult you trust about whether it is real or not. Scenario 2. If you saw this headline online, would you trust it or check it? This example looks like it could be a joke. People usually share jokes to make people laugh. They tend to be very exaggerated or they can be sarcastic, saying one thing but meaning the opposite, and might even be trying to make fun of something or someone. It is important to read past the headline and look at who it is written by. Scenario 3. If you saw this competition online, would you trust it or would you check it? It can be really tempting to enter competitions online and sometimes they are genuine and you can win some great prizes. It can be helpful to think to yourself that if something seems too good to be true online, it probably isn't true. This might be an example of phishing. It's probably trying to collect personal information such as usernames and emails to gain access to people's accounts. Be careful about sharing personal information online and always check with an adult before entering any competitions. Scenario 4. If you saw this video online, would you trust it or would you check it? Remember that just like photos, videos can be edited too. You also might not be given all the correct information. In this example, it says first time trick shot. This probably isn't true and more than likely took a lot of time and effort. And our final scenario, if you receive this message online, would you trust it or would you check it? Make sure you always keep your personal information safe online. If a stranger online asks to meet up for any personal information or for pictures or videos, it is really important not to share any of these and to tell an adult you trust straight away. They can help you and make sure the correct action is taken, like blocking the user so they can't contact you again and making a report. Well folks, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. That's the end of the game show. And thanks for tuning in. 
And remember, when you are online, should you trust it or check it? Just like the trust it or check it game show we play today, we also need to think about how what we see online makes us feel. There are lots of things you can do to help, but most importantly, make sure you talk to an adult you trust for help. This could be an adult at school or at home. Have a great week everyone and stay safe. Bye! Stay connected and every day Now we meet online It is the only way It can help us To realise our dreams Sometimes everything's Not always as it seems So who do we trust? You know that you must Be safe So who do you trust? You know that you must Be safe and things will all be better Is it real? Is it fake? I know we can make A better internet together So who do you trust? You know that you must be safe and things will all be better Is it 